Welding has been around in some form or fashion since the 4th century AD, and modern welding techniques fueled the Industrial Revolution and are crucial to many modern industries. Welding is a very broad term, covering hundreds if not thousands of specific materials joining processes. Even if you're not a welder by trade or materials joining engineer, understanding how various materials can be joined is a fairly useful life skill. To start off your understanding of welding processes, let's throw out a bunch of acronyms and terms and then dive into specific processes a little later on. The main welding processes are shielded metal arc welding, gas tungsten arc welding, gas metal arc welding, flux cord arc welding, submerged arc welding, electro slag welding, and lastly, resistance welding. These are only the basic welding methods and there are many different variations of each, along with techniques that weld using frictions, lasers, and even electron beams. Each process is specifically designed for different metals, and there are even processes that can weld dissimilar metals, like copper and iron. There's no way we can cover an extensive review of every single welding process in this video, but we can probably cover enough so you can keep up in a conversation about welding, if you ever find yourself in one of those. All welding processes induce fusion through some energy source. In other words, the base metal is melted in some way. Processes like shielded metal arc welding use an electrode that melts to induce fusion on the base metal and acts as a filler metal for the joint. Gas tungsten arc welding, or what you might know by the name of TIG welding, uses a tungsten electrode and an inert gas, usually helium, to weld the base metal. What you'll find in common between all of the processes mentioned in this video is that there's some form of arc or electrode being used to spark the fusion reaction, thus the A in all of the acronyms for each technique. The only exception in the list that we provided is resistance welding, which uses an electric current to generate heat through the resistance of two overlapping metals. This is just simply a slightly different use of electricity to weld. Arc welding is the most common, but it's also important to note that there is also gas welding and energy beam welding. These processes use gas or energy beams to heat up the material, rather than current and voltage. Gas and energy methods, while very variant are fairly simple to understand in basic mechanics. Each different arc technique uses a different electrode and a different setup of applying flux to the weld. Flux is a purifying agent that helps welds bond materials and maintain uniform structure, therefore increasing strength. For most of the welding techniques, you can somewhat infer how they work from their names. Flux cord arc welding uses a wire with, you guessed it, a flux core. Contrary to what you might think, submerged arc welding isn't actually an underwater process. It uses a consumable electrode to weld under a blanket of flux, therefore submerging the weld under the flux to keep it safe from the atmosphere. Now that we have some background on all of the various welding techniques, we can begin to understand how to weld various metals. Instead of taking a long time to explain why each welding technique can weld each certain material, we'll pop this quick guide on the screen and go through it pretty fast. Steel can be used with these techniques, stainless steel with these, aluminum with these, cast iron with this one, copper and brass with TIG, magnesium alloy with TIG, and titanium with TIG as well. As you can probably notice, iron-based metals can be welded with various techniques, but other metals can't. That's because they have less compatible cell structures and they take specific techniques to weld. The reason behind both steel's wide range of techniques and other metals specific techniques has to do with cell structure, phase changes, melting points, and many other factors that we won't get into here. If you want to join two dissimilar metals, say aluminum to steel, welders have to get creative in their techniques. The most common way to weld dissimilar metals or metals not compatible compatible with each other is to use a filler metal that is compatible to both. In the case of aluminum and steel, zinc can be used as a transition metal, or special transition inserts can be fabricated. If you want to learn about the welding of dissimilar metals, these processes are on the cutting edge of materials joining techniques. Groundbreaking research is continually being made in the areas of friction stir welding, laser welding, and even explosive welding. Welding is both an incredibly simple thing to grasp, yet also a process filled with endless complexities and sciences. 